Hi class, my name is Jacqueline Espinosa and today I will be talking about Aspergillus flavus. It is a fungi, the division is Ascomycota, the class is Eurotymycetes, the family is Trichocomyce, the genus is Aspergillus and the species is a flavus. And you can see in this picture, it is a conidophore of a flavus. A flavus is sometimes referred to as a mole and it impacts animals, both plants and humans. It is capable of growing in many nutrient sources, predominantly a saprophyte that grows on dead plant and animal tissue in the soil. A flavus can also be pathogenic on plants, infecting the seeds of corn, peanuts, and animal species, including humans. And in this picture, you can see it's a macroscopic feature of a flavus, the deep woolly, woolly uh, brown green olive colony, fasciculated white margins. Now, a flavus is the second leading cause of aspergillus in humans. It is common both indoors and outdoors. It is airborne. It can cause infection in the lungs and it's an infection sinuses that can spread throughout the body. So most people breathe this in every day, but it is most harmful to those who already have a weakened immune system. And it can also lead to other diseases. Like I didn't, I should have put it on here, but, um, it can also, the A flavus can also produce toxins like aflatoxin, which is commonly found in peanuts, which is why even to this day, a lot of peanuts are still being recalled because of it. And in this image, you can see uh, it is, well, it shows a central bronchiectasis, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, in a patient with an allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis. Uh, the symptoms of aspergillosis, it can be allergic or it can be chronic. And the allergic can cause coughing, fever, headaches, shortness of breath, and loss of smell. And the chronic could be weight loss, coughing up blood, fatigue, chest pain, and shortness of breath. Aspergillosis can affect individuals of any age. For when it is chronic, it takes a while for the patient to develop these symptoms. It is also common for chronic patients to develop a mass of fungus fibers called aspergilloma in the cavities within the lungs. And because of aspergilloma, aka fungus ball, it can be a long-term condition for a, from three months or more. Treatments for an allergic aspergillosis, um, there is antifungal medication. It can come in capsules, tablets, or a solution called itraconocel. Oh, wow. These are so hard. Um, or for the most serious allergic, re re allergic reactions of this fungal infection, they can prescribe corticosteroids, which is more common with people who have weakened immune systems. When it becomes invasive, meaning that it's already showing this fungus ball in your lungs, surgery is prescribed or advised for this to remove part of the lung that is contaminated with this fungus ball. Uh, so far, there are no vaccines because it's not a virus. It is a fungus. And here are a couple of pictures of how this fungus looks in corn. And I think I should change that to aflavus, not aspergillosis. And indoors and outdoors. Sorry, I was talking to myself. <laughs> Uh, the mold aspergillus that causes aspergillosis, it's very common both indoor and outdoor. Because this disease is not reported, the exact number of cases are hard to determine. 
Um, also, most of the cases of aspergillosis are not part of the outbreak, but it can occur in a hospitalized patients. Um, it is often found associated with hospitals who are under construction or renovation. Uh, the invasive mortality rate is 30 to 95 percent, whereas the chronic is 10 to 40 percent. And the next two slides are my references.